thank you for the opportunity and uh you know it's 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 uh, nice to be closing the session after such a, a good series of talks uh, i'm an immunologist and uh, an engineer here at emory university in atlanta and the work that i'm going to be talking about was uh, funded by an eager award by a cbet um and it was done really by grad students in my group, Brian Dobosch. Um, a lot of the bioinformatics done by a, a postdoc in my group, Diego Moncada. And all the BSL3 work, really the work with the virus itself was done in collaboration with uh, Kevin Zandi um, and um, in the laboratory of Raymond Chinazi, who's a, a, you know, a, a prominent virologist and, and, um, and, and, uh, and pharmacologist um, here in our university. So uh, as um, you guys know, um, SARS-CoV-2 uh, is infecting um, a number of uh, cells uh, in the body, throughout the body, is uh, causing that disease, COVID-19, which is really a multi-organ disease. And um, even though, you know, I think we need to think about the, the different organs that are being affected, most of the morbidity and mortality in patients is linked to the lung manifestation. And it is really due to the infection of uh, the uh, cells lining the lung, the epithelial cells. And that leads to, uh, in the complications of the disease, uh, the influx of uh, monocytes and neutrophils from blood, and then these cells sort of compound on the, uh, the, the initial issue that was um, um, you know, caused by the infection of the epithelium. So uh, our mandate really uh, was to uh, use a system that we developed for other diseases in which we grow um, human airway cells at air liquid interface so that they, they mimicry the conditions in which they, they grow in the lung, and we can infect them with the virus for uh, different, periods, different periods of time. And then we can let uh, different sets of uh, immune cells, primary immune cells from human blood, uh, transmigrate and meet the virus on the other side. So we're really trying to mimic uh, the uh, sequence of events. So the, the viral infection, then the monocytes coming in, then the neutrophils. We can add drugs at any point in time uh, to affect infection or, or immune response. And then we can obviously analyze the different components in that model. Uh, and we use a lot of different omics methods. Our goal is really to characterize the steps in pathogenesis and also to uh, check for uh, potential benefits of candidate drugs. And I'm gonna show you a, a few data that, that um, basically you know, report on our progress. On the epithelial side of things, obviously you wanna make sure that uh, in our system, uh, the virus behaves similarly to what we've been seeing in vivo. This is really the case. Uh, I'm showing you here a quick comparison of SARS-CoV-2 with PR8, which is an H1N1 influenza A virus, and OC43 that you can see here is one of the common cold coronaviruses. And right away, you can see by RNA sequencing and heat maps that I'm showing you here of a few families of genes that, um, you know, with the, with the influenza virus, antiviral genes are really hot, so they're red, uh, but the coronaviruses are really uh, much colder. So this is one of the, um, the areas of interest uh, in, in uh, pathology and also in therapeutics. Coronavirus seems, coronaviruses, and especially SARS-CoV-2, seem to be very good at uh, preventing the activation of antiviral pathways in epithelial cells. On the other hand, if you look at the cytokine genes here, there's really discrepancies between the three viruses. And we can see right away that SARS-CoV-2 um, is uh, able to activate an IL-10 response but not so much an IL-8 response. So it's really promoting more of an, a monocytic um, inflammation to begin with, and uh, neutrophilic inflammation comes after. So this is really what, um, what we see in vivo. Now, uh, the model is really uh, unique in its ability to combine epithelial cells and, in, and virus and immune cells. So we can, for example, look at um, in the process of this, uh, uh, of this uh, infection of those two cell types, we can look at the effect of drugs. So baricitinib is an immunomodulator that was approved uh, by FDA, remdesivir is an antiviral, and uh, they work in, uh, through different mechanisms of action. There's obviously uh, interest in combining them. So we can see that we can combine both drugs, we can us actually block the migration of monocytes secondary to the infection of the epithelium. So that might be uh, responsible for some of the benefits that we see for uh, those drugs when they're combined in vivo. Uh, we can also look at the viral burden in the different uh, compartments of our model, in the uh, epithelial cells, in the monocytes, in the extracellular fluid, and we can combine uh, all of those to look at the total viral burden. And you can see again that the combina combination of remdesivir and baracitinib in uh, you know, six to 10 different um, replicates here uh, shows a, a decrease in the total viral burden. 
Um, more importantly, we can also look uh, very much in depth at the um, molecular response in terms of transcription and, and all other functions that you're interested in in the epithelial cells, in the leukocytes. In this case, I want to illustrate uh, our ability to show, for example, in the context of no drug, uh, that the uh, monocytes uh, that are infected by SARS-CoV-2 show a huge decrease in the transcription of, of interferon and also the sting um, RNA sensor. But uh, by the same token, the infection is increasing the uh, uh, transcription of, of IL-1 beta and also IL-8, which we know are going to lead to the uh, recruitment of neutrophils. And again, we can look at the effect of uh, dr single drugs or drug combinations in that system at the uh, transcriptional level. Uh, what's really interesting is that um, you know, there was a paper in Nature yesterday showing that um, alveolar macrophages show a huge burden of SARS-CoV-2. At the time that we were you know, working on our study, we actually didn't have a lot of uh, data uh, going in that, in that direction. So we realized by computational uh, means, this is a work that we did in collaboration with Gosen Lab at Emory, uh, some single cell RNA-seq data from bronchoalveolar lavage of mild and severe COVID patients who are all hospitalized. And we found a population of um, monocytes in the lung that show exactly the same uh, type of transcriptional activation upon uh, encounter with the virus, but they are very high for IL-8 and IL-1 beta. So we think our model mirrors in, in vivo data, both on the epithelial side, also on the leukocyte side. So in summary, we have the ability to recruit monocytes, infect them uh, by SARS-CoV-2. They produce a proneutrophilic uh, response. All of this is mirrored uh, you know, between our, the in vitro model and, and in vivo situation. There are a number of questions, obviously, that we're asking in this model, both in terms of the virology and the immunology. We uh, have now this model under provisional patent uh, for drug testing, because we think this is sort of the most urgent um, effort that needs to be uh, put together. And we're testing a number of immunomodulatory, antiviral, and pro-repair drugs. Uh, so, uh, you know, more in the um, next few months on this. I'm just going to finish here by acknowledging uh, folks in my lab, uh, folks in the Shinazi lab, Gosen lab, Gibson Lab at Georgia Tech who uh, helped us with some of the transcriptional analysis. And again, the, um, the Eager Award that was um, instrumental in, in um, having us you know, start this project and pivot from our uh, work in lung immunology to, uh, to COVID-19 research. And this is my contact. I'm gonna stop there and I'm happy to take um, questions in the chat. Thank you all.